things would not have been brought into being by God in any manner or in any order different from that which has in fact obtained. Whatsoever is, is in God and without God nothing can be or be conceived. God is the immanent cause of all things, never truly transcended from them. I believe that a triangle, if it could speak, would say that God is eminently triangular and a circle, that the divine nature is eminently circular and thus would everyone ascribe his own attributes to God. God is the indwelling and not the transient cause of all things. He who loves God cannot endeavor that God should love him in return. In regard to intellect and true virtue, every nation is on a par with the rest and God has not in these respects chosen one people rather than another. Man can indeed act contrarily to the decrees of God as far as they have been written like laws in the minds of ourselves or the prophets. But against that eternal decree of God which is written in universal nature and as regard to the course of nature as a whole he can do nothing. That eternal and infinite being we call God or nature acts from the same necessity from which he exists. God is the efficient cause not only of the existence of things, but also of their essence God. Individual things are nothing but modification of the attributes of God or words by which the attributes of God are expressed in a fixed and definite manner. I do not believe anyone has reached such perfection, surpassing all others except Christ, whom God immediately revealed without words or vision, the conditions which lead to salvation.